up that name of Jesus, the name above every other name, for he's worthy of all praise, he's worthy of all adoration, both now and forever we join with all of creation, Lord God, to praise that name, you who was and is and forever will be, to you the elders and the angels praise from eternity to eternity, singing holy are you God Almighty, so this afternoon, oh Lord God, we join fires in heaven. This afternoon, oh Lord God, we join with all that has breath. We join with all that has been created by your hands, oh Lord, to worship you, King Jesus.
saints of God. The presence of the Lord is here. His love, His warm embrace is here. Now, we want to pray right now. We want to open up this space to pray. And we want to pray for hopeless situations. You could be there. The theme of this year says, lights shine bright. And you're asking yourself, how can I shine bright with so much darkness, with so much desperation in my life? Or in the life of my loved one? Or in the life of someone that I know? Like we did it in the other services. If you're here and you want us to join our faith with you, the servants of God here are here who will join our faith with yours. You say, there's this hopeless situation. It could be in form of a sickness. It could be in form of a court case. It could be in form of uh, a financial uh, struggle. It could be a, a child addiction or your, your, your own addiction. If you're there and you'd like us to join our faith with you. The Lord loves you and wants you to have a breakthrough. I want you to come forward and we'll pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for these hopeless situations. In the name of Jesus, we speak the name of Jesus in these situations. We speak the name of Jesus. We speak the name of Jesus. We speak the name of Jesus. We speak the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. We speak out to that mountain. We say, Thou mountain be moved in Jesus' name. Let me ask the pastors to please pray for this, those that have come. And if you're also watching us online, please type in the section, uh, in the comment section. I, you don't have to mention that struggle. Just mention it and, and one of us will reach out to you and they will pray with you. You don't have to struggle with that hopeless situation alone. Amen. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to be in that oppressed situation. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else. No. Oh, you're great. For you are great. There is no cause so great. There is no one else. There is no one. There is no one else like you. no one is like you there is no one like you for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you for you are great you do miracles so great there is no Father, we thank you. We thank you for your mirror, the wonder-working power in the house today. We thank you for the miracles in this house. We thank you, Lord. We commit these situations into your hands. Right now, we speak Jesus into every situation. We declare that starting today, we'll begin to see signs of breakthroughs. We begin to see signs of wonders and miracles that are happening in those desperate situations. We begin to see signs that are turning around. We speak a turnaround in the name of Jesus. We declare that let there be a turnaround in the name of Jesus. A turnaround for the better. We thank you, Father. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Isn't Jesus wonderful? Isn't he powerful? Put your hands together for him. Oh, yes. And uh, let's also appreciate our worship team, Pastor Prince and the team. God bless you for leading us so powerfully. Amen. I tell you, every darkness shall come to light in Jesus' name. I don't know which situations, but in G we speak Jesus to that situation. Amen. My name is Jack Hodari. Uh, I serve in CLA on the pastoral team in charge of sales and discipleship, and I'm glad to be your host this afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, now, do we have those who are worshiping with us for the very first time? Today is your first time. We would like to speak a word of blessing in your life. You're there. Please rise on your feet. Rise. My sister, God bless you. My brother, yes. God bless you. God bless you over there. This side. Okay. Middle. Oh, yes. My sister, God bless you. And my brother over there, God bless you. Uh, we speak... Jesus into your life. May you coming today to church today, may it be a turnaround for the better. May it be of record that you came to CLA and things started to shift positively for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the ushers are giving you two cards. One is a, a contact uh, connection card. You fill your details. And the other one is an information tag that you put in your Bible, an information that tells you about our vision and our mission and about our services. Now, uh, feel free to put, to keep the, the small one and put it in your Bible, where you, you have your favorite scriptures. I, I, many, all my scriptures, most scriptures are my favorite. Psalms 23, Psalms 91. Uh, now we have uh, John, John chapter 8. And we, uh, anyway, we have your favorite scripture. Just put that thing there and God will bless you. Now, when the service is over, don't rush to go would like to show you, to talk to you. Our team will be waiting for you at the hospital, in the hospitality room. It's marked there. Just make your way there. There's a team that will talk to you about CLA and would like to know more about you. And let me say this. If you are visiting and you are looking for a church, a body of Christ where to belong, let me tell you, this is the best body of Christ to belong to. Make this your church. Amen? But if you're going through and you'll be going back to your station, please take our love to your church back home. Tell them we love them. Tell them we're praying and we're looking forward to that day when Jesus Christ will come back on that beautiful morning where we shall live with Jesus eternally, with glorified bodies. Amen? God bless you. Yeah, uh, let's have church news. Praise God, CLA. Welcome to church. My name is Albina Shannon, and I serve under the youth ministry and the multimedia ministry. It is a pleasure to host church news today. And these are our weekly events. Every Monday, the ladies gather for a prayer altar that happens at 5 a.m., 1 p.m., and 10 p.m. Every Tuesday, we meet at the main auditorium for evening prayers from 6 to 8 p.m. Every Wednesday, we have prayer thons that take place from 5.15 a.m. to 6 a.m. We also have cells that take place in our various neighborhoods. Thursdays, we have men's prayer altar that takes place from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Intercessory takes place every Friday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Kids Connection is back, and it takes place during the first and the third service. Do you want to be baptized? Well, I have good news for you. Our baptism class is taking place on the 10th of February, and followed by our baptism service that will be taking place on the 13th of February. Do you want to become a member of our wonderful church? Feel free to pick a form at the back at the end of our service. Do you want to become a cell leader or a cell host? We have a training that's taking place from 16th to the 18th of February. Registration is at the back. Are you a young mother, a teenage mother, a mother to adults, a grandmother, or even mothering beyond the womb? The Intentional Mothers Program 
will equip you with knowledge, shared experiences, and with a community of like-minded women. Parenting is a lifetime of learning as our children grow through the stages. Their needs are changing, friends are changing, their experiences are changing, even our relationships with them do change. All mothers out there, please join us for the 2024 Intentional Mothers Program. Mamas, let's support each other on this journey. Please register at the back. See you there. My name is Albina Shannon, and it has been a pleasure hosting Church News this week. How many of us loved Albina? She was short, sharp, and shiny. And I love the Church News today. I don't know about you. God bless you, Albina, if you're watching. Um, now, we are going to pray for the intending couple. Uh, do we have Christian and Natasha in the house? This afternoon? Yes, please, come. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, let them come. We're going to pray for them. And let their family members, their cell members, you can pass here. Let their church members, sorry, their cell members and their family members on all sides. And they're beautiful. Keep clapping for them. Yeah. You know, uh, we were discussing this with Pastor Mary and, and, and uh, uh, Uncle Pastor Method, and this, we need, these people need to be celebrated. You know, they're overcoming that pressure of the now thing that co called L L -Q, L LGBTQ, uh, that thing. They're overcoming it, so we have to praise the Lord for them. They are going to do it the way God has instituted it. Amen. Hallelujah. We are going to ask... Where are the family members and the cell members? Yeah, we, we will ask uh, uh, Pastor Andrew Mukinisha to please pray for this couple. And um, let me tell you, Natasha and Christian, you're, you're lucky today. Uh, Pastor Andrew is going to pray for you. The, he will release an anointing over your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please stretch your hands towards them? Uh, let's pray for God's blessing over their lives. Our Father and God, we are so, so grateful to you for Christian and Natasha. You created them in your own image, and you've been watching over them since they were born. And Lord, as they prepare to get married, we commit them to you. We believe that marriage is a whole institution that was uh, instituted by you. And it's a way that you continue to bless and, and increase uh, humanity. And so, Lord, we commit them to you. May you order their steps, O oh Lord. May you guide their plans. May you be with them, O oh Lord. May you give them peace in their hearts, even as they uh, pursue this relationship, O oh Lord. We pray that you may help them to lay the right kind of foundation upon which their marriage and life shall be built. And there is no any other foundation that anyone can lay except Christ Jesus, who is the foundation, the right foundation. Father, we pray that you may bless them abundantly. May you provide every need, O oh God, that they have. May you uh, fulfill every dream, O oh God as they choose to live together in a way that honors you, in a way that glorifies your name. We pray, King of Kings, that you will bless not only their wedding day, but their marriage and the family that we give them. We commit them to you, to your love and to your care in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and the saints you say, Amen. Amen. May God bless you, Christian. May God bless you, Natasha. God be with you on this journey. Amen.
Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Yes, uh, today being the first Sunday of the month of February is uh, a mercy ministry Sunday. So today the ushers will be giving you uh, a brown envelope to put in an, uh, an offering for, towards mercy ministry. And we thank you. Uh, let, me, let me say this. Uh, CLA congregation is the most generous congregation in this city. And we, we so appreciate what you've been doing for those people in the mercy ministry, especially the, the vulnerable women and the offices, the orphans and vulnerable children. Now, in the brown envelope, you put a minimum of 1,000 francs. And also, the projecting Momo codes, if you'd like to give electronically towards mass ministry. Now, let me also add that uh, among the offices, the orphan vulnerable children, we, have, we, 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 we are putting them through school. And we are encouraging individuals to come forward and support putting some of these, the ones that are in secondary schools, through school. Uh, the school fees every term is 19,500. 19,500, which you can pay every four months. So yeah, if you feel convicted that to support one of them through school, see Aline at, uh, at the back after the service and we'll register you and God, as you do so, God will bless you. And also, we're also going to be giving our offerings and our tithes alongside. And therefore, I'm going to pray. And then after that, uh, the man of God will come. Pastor Peter will come and share the word of God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the generosity of your children. We pray that you bless them, those who give towards mercy ministries and those who give their offerings and their tithes. I pray you bless them. And this offering given, I pray you bless it and sanctify it and use it for the expansion of your kingdom. Lord, I also pray the word that is going to be preached. Lord, for the Bible tells us that the entrance of your word brings light and understanding to the simple. Right now, we receive it with joy. Lord, we pray for our hearts to receive it with meekness so that it will be active in our lives. We thank you, give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Everything I believe in Surrender No 
Thank you, Lord. Let us lift our hands in the air and worship God in our own words. Father God, we come before your throne this afternoon. Thank you, Lord God, for your love. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be in your house. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us the grace, O oh God of glory, to embless your love. And this day as we come to the hearing of your word, we humble ourselves and pray that, Lord, your Holy Spirit will illuminate our hearts, that we may be able to clearly understand what you're speaking to the church today. And at the end of this work, O oh Lord, or ministry of the word, may our lives be transformed that we may be able to go out and shine our lights brightly, that the world may know you and come to the knowledge of the truth. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good afternoon, CLA. Can we appreciate the worship team? And the ushers, the band. Look at uh, Guiana there, the tech team, and everybody that is serving us today. I believe you've been blessed in one way or the other. Praise the Lord. Our theme is challenging us to shine our lights bright. Praise the Lord. And so... I'm going to be talking about the power of the light. Praise the Lord. I'll be talking about the power of the light. But before I go or delve into my sermon today, I just want to share with us what I sense is the direction that God is putting upon our hearts as the church leadership to lead this congregation to. While I was praying close to the end of last year, and I was asking God. I was seeking his face. That where do you want us to go? How do you want us to go about it? And I was telling God, I am praying that you will let your presence go with us in 2024. How many of you would like to have the presence of God in your offices? I know, in your homes, 
in your classrooms for those who are students, in your children. Praise the Lord. How about in his house here? Every time we assemble to worship him. That was my prayer. And I told God, may you send your presence with us as we enter into 2024. We want to experience the supernatural power of God. Because I believe it's not just ink on paper. It's real. When we embrace the light of God, when we encounter the power of God, we cannot remain the same. You cannot walk the same way you've been walking. Praise the Lord. Are you getting me? And you want to know what the response I got was in line with Exodus chapter 33 from verse 1. If you read the whole chapter, and God spoke to me, and this shook me a little bit. Praise the Lord. God told the children of Israel that his presence cannot go in their midst because they are a stiff-necked people. And as I continued to pray and to seek the face of God, you know, God loves us. Praise the Lord. Tell somebody that Jesus loves you. Yes. Yeah, I love the smiles that I'm seeing. It is possible for you to come in this congregation and go back without knowing the person that was seated next to you. Jesus loves you. Praise the Lord. So, what came strong to my heart was the word consecration. That we cannot shine our lights bright unless that light has dealt with us very well. Because it must be a reflection of our experience. Praise the Lord. It must be a reflection of our experience. You will all agree with me that we have come to a common ground that Jesus is the light. So it's a personification of Jesus. And he himself, he declares in the book of John chapter 8, verses 12, that I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus is the light. Of the world, and whoever follows him does not walk in darkness, but he will have the light of life. Praise the Lord. So that is exactly what it means. When you embrace the light of God, you have embraced life, and not only just life, but eternal life. And you cannot afford to walk in darkness. Number two, we have also come to an agreement that God is the father of light. In the book of James chapter 1 verses 16 to 18, the Bible says, Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. I love this scripture. It says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. That is our God. That is our God, our good God. He's the Father of all lights. Praise the Lord. And from him comes good stuff. And so the moment you embrace this light, you are expected to be a child of light. You are expected to bear the fruit of repentance. You are expected to have that conviction in your life that will eventually convert you and make you the kind of light that is desired out here. And to be honest, 
the world is hurting. And the world is desperate for this light. But it has to start with me and with you. This light has to first expose the undesired lifestyles in you and in me. And the moment you understand that and you are convicted, you are able to let go of what is not godly and embrace what is godly, which is what God desires of us. Verse 18 says, of his, will, uh, pardon, of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So we also notice that light is good, and light is life, and Jesus is life. Praise the Lord. I'm going to be talking about three points. I will be talking about conviction, when you embrace the power of light, what happens? Then there is conviction of sin, conviction of righteousness, and conviction of judgment. That is my first point. And then I'll be talking about conversion. Conversion. You turn away from your old lifestyle. You repent of your sinful ways, and you begin to walk in the righteousness of God by his grace. Praise the Lord. And lastly, I'll be talking about transformation. John chapter 16, verses 8. This is what the word of God says, and I will read for us. And when he has come, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. He will convict of the world. He will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. When you embrace the light of God, you begin to see clearly what sin is. You begin to see what it means to do what God loves. Praise the Lord. I want to just take this a little bit higher. Before you embrace the light of God or you encounter Christ for that matter, it becomes normal to lie. To some people, it is easy to commit adultery. Am I right? Just walking from your own family and say, you're going away, you know, to a hotel, and you're going to cheat on your wife, the one you call the sweetheart, that means you are dead spiritually. You understand? But the moment you embrace this light, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, that you, he made alive. He awakens your other senses. And by the time you're making steps to go and commit sin, you know that I'm going to sin. You understand what I mean? Conviction. Conviction. You're able to see and to hear. And that is why the gospel according to John 16, 8 says, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And I am not saying this to judge anybody, but I'm saying this to let you know that the day of judgment is coming. First Peter chapter 4 verse 17 says it very well. He says that the day, I'm paraphrasing, the day of judgment will come and it will start in the house of the Lord. And therefore, if it's going to start in the house of the Lord, how worse is it going to be for those who have rejected the gospel? Praise the Lord. So God loves us. And he's awakening us to that. If you are here and you are walking in a certain lifestyle that does not please God, please understand that God is calling you out. He's telling you to free from death. Why? Because the wages of sin is death. 
And the gift of God is eternal life. Praise the Lord. And that is the gospel truth. So, what happens when we embrace this light is that now we begin to become aware. We begin to understand when we are going the wrong path. Even when we do it, we still know that it is not godly. Praise the Lord. Listen to the story of David. When he had understood, I mean, from Prophet Nathan, who came and painted a picture of how he had, you know, uh, set up Uriah, Uriah in the Bible uh, for death so that he may cover up his sin. He had committed a sin of adultery with Bathsheba. Now, when he came to realize that the story that was being told about the rich and the poor man, a rich man who was greedy and took what belonged to the poor man, he immediately took this step that I am going to read for us in Psalms 51. He says, have mercy upon me. That is 51 verses 1. Oh God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, brought out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity. And in sin, my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. And he says in verse 7, purge me with high soap. Purge me with high soap and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Conviction. Conviction of sin. Conviction of righteousness. Conviction of judgment. And he says, hide your face from my sins and brought out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steady fast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. And... Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. He goes on to say, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will treat transgressors. Then I will be able to shine my light bright. Now, this is what David is saying. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. It has to begin with us. Praise the Lord. I don't want to assume that we are doing well. I am basing this message on what God is calling us as a congregation to do. To consecrate our lives. To sanctify ourselves. To set ourselves apart. And if you're here and you have never given your life to Jesus, it is an awakening voice that you need to receive or to invite Jesus Christ in your heart because the day of judgment is for sure coming. I do not know the hour, but I know when Jesus returns, he's not coming as a baby in a manger. He is coming as a king. He's coming as a judge. He is coming to take his bride, his church, that is without a spot or a wrinkle. Praise the Lord. Are you getting it? Praise Jesus. So conviction comes as a result of embracing the light. Praise the Lord. I want to finish with verse 15. He says, deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O oh God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud 
of your righteousness. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. When we embrace the light, our lives are convicted and we are transformed and we are converted. Praise the Lord. And so I want to go to this other story so that you may understand what I mean. In the, uh, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 5, the Bible says, this is Isaiah, he says, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. Conviction, because he has seen the light. When you embrace the light, you begin to see clearly. You begin to hear clearly the voice of God. I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. You cannot afford to remain the same when you embrace the light of God. Praise the Lord. Your company will change. Praise Jesus. Your way of conduct, your speech will change naturally because Jesus becomes the light through you. Praise the Lord. What is sin? I want to give a simple definition. Sin is anything you say, do, or think that goes against what God wants. It is simply missing the mark. When Adam and Eve went against the instructions of God in the Garden of Eden, their fellowship with God became difficult. And their relationship as well became what? Complicated. They had missed the mark. They had disobeyed God. And that is what sin can do. It's missing the mark. It's disobedient. When Christ comes into your heart, he begins to convict you of anything sinful or ungodly. And I want to help us not to be trapped by the free grace movement. Praise the Lord. Grace is not there to help us continue sinning. Grace is there to help us come out of our sinful lifestyles. Praise the Lord. Grace is there to help us walk that life that God desires us to walk. It's actually what helps us to come out of our sinful ways. Praise the Lord. Now, it is possible, it is very possible for us to be convicted of our sinful nature or our sinful ways, but still harden our hearts. There are quite a number of people that reject the light. The Bible says in the book of, again, John chapter 3, verses 18 to 21, that he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the, holy, uh, the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world and men love the darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. Praise the Lord. Conviction. When you embrace the light of God, then he convicts you of your wicked ways. And the second thing that happens when you embrace the power of the light is conversion. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 3, I will read from verse 19 to 21. And this is Peter, Simon Peter. 
Let me give a background to this story before I read it. Simon, Peter, and John, like many other believers, would walk to the temple to pray. And every time they walked to the temple, they found this crippled man by the gate of, it was called a beautiful gate, asking for arms. And so one time they were going to pray, it was Peter and John, and they found him there. And when they looked at his face, they knew what he was going to do. And listen to what they told him. They said, silver and gold we do not have. But what we have, we give to you. Rise up. Praise the Lord. So they gave him their hand and supported him to rise up. When we embrace the light of God... The supernatural power prevails. It becomes eminent because we are walking with the presence of God wherever we go. And what happened to that man? The Bible says he went with them in the temple. Did you hear me? He went with them in the temple praising the Lord. That is the effect of embracing the light in your life. If you truly converted, and you have embraced the light of God, it is going to become eminent that in your workstation, that light is going to draw people to godliness. They did not have money. Sometimes we think that money will sort it out. But they had Jesus. People are desperate for what you have. They are desperate for Jesus. Praise the Lord. And, you know, the story goes on, and this is what happens in verse 19 to 21. People are busy wondering whether there was some magic, and he says, repent therefore and be converted. You know, in some versions, it says, repent and be saved. Now, he's saying, repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may be brought out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And that he may send Jesus Christ. When we consecrate ourselves, when we embrace the light of Christ in our lives, supernatural miracles will happen in our midst. Verse 20 says, And that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is going to create a hunger in us to seek to grow in the Lord, to seek to be part of the fellowships, to seek to study the word of God and know the truth. Because then we have been converted. We desire a different menu of food. We desire the food of the Spirit. This means is that conversion comes with committing your life to be led and guided by Christ alone. It does not just happen in our human strength. It doesn't just come. It comes with the enablement of grace. Praise the Lord. That is where grace plays his role. He comes in to enable you to overcome the lust of the flesh, to overcome your habits. Some of us struggle with different habits. To overcome the temptation of going in wrong places. Praise the Lord. Hello? Are we together? Yes. That's conversion. It comes with you committing your life to be led and be guided by the Spirit of God. It comes by you surrendering your will to the will of God. Surrendering your ego. Surrendering your weaknesses. 
surrendering your failures, your flaws. You know them. I know myself. And what God is calling us to, for him to do what he wants to do in my life, in my family, in this congregation, is that I need to sanctify myself. I need to free from my wrongdoing so that then that light of God may shine through me and draw as many as possible to the love of God. Praise God. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter 9. I will read a few verses from verse 3 to 6. This was a dramatic experience that Paul had. This is not a usual one. Paul, Paul, you all know the story of Paul in the book of Acts. He was called Saul, and then he was converted and became Paul. Saul, let me now start with Saul. Saul was a very, very bad guy. <laughs> he was known to persecute the church of Christ. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that he was one, actually, supervising those who were stoning Stephen, that centric person. Saul was there. And so, hearing that the gospel is being propagated regardless of the death of Stephen, he asked for letters to go and deal with those believers that were preaching the gospel wherever they had been scattered. So he heads to Damascus. The Bible says in verse 3 of chapter 9 that as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? The power of light brings conversion. However stubborn you may be, however far you have gone, I want you to embrace the light of God. You will never remain the same. And he said, who are you, Lord? This is Paul. Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the gods. So he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? He was converted by the power of the light. Praise the Lord. He was converted by the power of light. And if you read verses 17 downwards, the Bible tells us that then God sent one of the men to go to him. And, you know, when he reached to him, he laid his hand upon him. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. And after being filled with the Holy Spirit, he was baptized. And after being baptized, off he took off to shine his light. He went. He went and preached the good news to the Gentiles, planted many churches, wrote many letters in the, in, the, in the New Testament. Praise the Lord. That is the power of light. Number three, as I come to the end of my message, is transformation. Number one, when you embrace the power of light, you are convicted of your sinful ways, your wicked ways, you are convicted of righteousness and of judgment. And number two, you are converted. By all means, if you embrace the light of God, then the grace of God comes in to play another role, to help you repent. And repenting means to turn away from your sinful ways. Number three, transformation begins to happen. And that is where actually the light will shine brighter. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17, that therefore if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Behold, the old is gone. You have become a new creation in Christ Jesus. 
you begin to bear the fruit that lasts, the fruit of repentance. Matthew 3, 8 says that. And in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23, this is what the Bible says. It says, uh, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and against such, there is no law. Praise the Lord. Transformation becomes to happen in your life. There is a rebirth that has taken place into your life. As I bring this message to a conclusion, I want us to reflect on these two main things. Number one, I want you to think about this as we close our eyes to pray. If Jesus showed up today, would he find me ready? This is a reflection question. Would he find you ready? If Jesus showed up in your life today, if Jesus showed up in my life today, would he find me ready? Would he find me ready? Think about that. Examine your life. We've been doing this right on our retreat. And I want us to do it as a congregation. You are a believer. You're born again. You have accepted Jesus. You've been to Sunday school. You've been through, you know, true north and you're here. But are you truly in position to say that if Jesus came, I would be able to go to heaven with him? And if that is not so, his grace is sufficient. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to cleanse you just like David did and allow his spirit to be eminent in your heart. Let him restore the joy of salvation in your life. And number two, again, if you're here and you have never, never, never embraced the light of God in your life, you've never invited Jesus to be the Lord and the Savior of your life. This is your opportunity. I want you to pray this prayer after me with the rest closing their eyes. This is a serious moment and I want us to really uh, be honest to God. So pray after me and say, Dear God, Thank you for sending your only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for my sins. Jesus, I invite you into my heart. I ask that you forgive me of all my trespasses and sins. Come and be the Lord over my speech, be the Lord over my conduct. Be the Lord over my entire life. From today, I embrace your love and mercy in Jesus' mighty name. Give it up for Jesus. If you've made this last prayer, I'd like to invite you to come and let's talk of how we can walk with your journey. God bless you. Uh, thank you, Pastor Peter. Please let's appreciate God for his life. Um, thank you, Pastor, for giving us that word in, in its raw form. And uh, I believe our lives will not remain the same. Amen. Uh, we've come to the end of our service. And uh, I have a few quick verbals, and then we'll be out of this place. Uh, uh, the first one is the intentional mothers. The intentional mothers training is starting tomorrow. Uh, please, if you want to be part of it, make sure to register at the back. 
and you you have to pay 30,000, carry with you 30,000 for the materials. The other uh, announcement, uh, the leading lights training uh, that was announced some time back will be starting on the 21st of February. And uh, it's for three days. Uh, the cost of that training is, is, is 35,000. That is for the meals and the materials that you'll be given. Uh, this Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, we'll be having Holy Communion in our cells. This announcement uh, concerns the cell hosts. And if the cell hosts maybe paradventure they've traveled, they're not around, so the cell leaders can take it up. Make sure to organize for the communion emblems and we'll do a cell, uh, Holy Commun we'll do a Holy Communion in cell. I look forward uh, in Kagarama. We'll be, we'll be launching a new cell in Kagarama, so I look forward to be there We'll be launching a new cell, and in that new cell, we'll have our communion service. I look forward to, you know, the, the cell that is being hosted at Pastor Hassan's house will be giving birth. And we, as a person in charge of cells, that is good news for me. And I think it's good news for everyone. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand clap. Uh, let me tell you this. CLA is a cell-based church, and if you don't belong to a cell... I request that you join one. And if you don't belong to a cell, after the service, please go to the cell information corner. You'll find information. They will direct you to a cell near your house, near your place. And uh, membership applications, if you are not a member, please, today is the last time to apply. Uh, at the end of the service, meet Madrin at the back. They'll give you a form to fill it up. In our the church in the church leadership retreat we had this week, we noticed that we have very many volunteers who are serving in CLA and they're not members. So we encourage you, if you're already serving in, a, in any ministry and you've not filled that form, please pick one form and register and be a member. Now, for the other people that are already members of CLA, we request that you renew your membership. It's so simple. A link will be shared on your WhatsApp. Click on it, register. It will take you one or two minutes, and you're done. And if you renew your membership, make it a point when they announce the AGA or the, the annual General Assembly, make it a point to come. Because if you don't come, then we don't, feel, we don't fill the quorum for our meeting. So as you renew your membership, commit to be part of the AGM. And uh, we have our baptism class next Saturday. Those of you who have already registered well and good, if you have not been baptized and you'd like to be baptized, please register at the back. Uh, we will do the class on Saturday at 9 a.m. here. Uh, I think it will be in one of the rooms downstairs. And then we'll have on Tuesday, the 13th of February, we'll have in the evening at 6 p.m., we'll have our baptism service. Yes, uh, then child dedication, if you have an infant, we do not baptize infants, but we dedicate them to the Lord. So if you have an infant that has not been dedicated to the Lord, please register at the back, and then we will go, we will go through the, the, the parental training of, on child dedication. Yeah, if you came late and you didn't give your offering, there's an option for you to give at, at the back. There are places where you can give your offering. Or you can meet Jackie under the Mercy Ministry banner to show you how you can give electronically. Last but not the least, our first-time visitors. Don't rush to go. We will uh, remember we want to talk to you in our visitor's lounge. So make your way to the visitor's lounge. God bless you uh, as you stand on your feet, as we share the words of the grace. In uh, first, Second Corinthians, the last chapter, the last verse. Uh, this is a quick announcement. One of us has lost a phone, and they're calling it, and it's ringing in somewhere in the church. If you see a phone that is not yours or you, that is not being attended to, please bring it to the uh, the desk at the back. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now now and forevermore, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. May you prosper this week.